I just think a lot of times in the hood, that hood keep us in the hood, even if we move out the hood. Mm. We could be around the world, and it's still we'd be on some hood, and it'll paralyze us from growth. It's like you in a, it's like you and you put yourself in a wheelchair and you can walk. So now you, your movement is slow. Come on, you, man. You know what I mean? Your resources are slow. So it's like, I just think it's that you just gotta wait for that one yes and it'll change your life. You know what I mean? That's all you need, that one yes, and the game is over. Yo, what's poppin'? This episode of the J-Hill Podcast is sponsored by Top Dog Law. Now, Top Dog Law is somebody I've been working with for a few years now, and I can honestly say he's an honest and hardworking personal injury attorney who fights to get negligent parties and their insurance companies to get you the maximum compensation you deserve. Whether it be from a car accident, a slip and fall at the job, or medical malpractice, Top Dog is here for you. Make sure you visit the website at topdoglaw.com to see what you're eligible for and even if he can help you with no money down. Listen, man, don't let these insurance companies finesse you out the right compensation that you deserve. Holla at my guy, Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram or topdoglaw.com. Let's get it. I don't got it. I don't know. We good. We're going to just do the two, the two cameras. For y'all that don't know, we um we set up in like a, a, a workspace. Office. Yeah, yeah cool. office. So like... If we making it, like, it work. Yeah, we making it work. So we gonna just be transparent, right? So yeah. that's why you still see me moving around trying to make sure everything, because the nigga worked too hard for this. But yeah, um, the thing that stood out to me was like, it starts off with saying like you lived in not the poorest of neighborhoods, right? It was like working class people. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And, and your mom's was like she was she was working for y'all. Yeah. Something happened when she injured her foot. I won't have to like I don't want to like give too much of the book, but basically. I feel like I've been stuck with talking about proximity. And it's like sometimes you feel like you're forced into doing something that you might not want to do by the influence. And I think your brother was probably the first one that introduced like hustling yeah. to you, like, yo, it's time to get up and get it. Yeah. Little Steve, rest in peace. Yeah. You know, when that came, it was just a moment. You know, it was like I can remember it vividly, like it was yesterday when my mom came home that time and dropped the case of Similac on her feet. And, um, and I'm young. But I already knew it was time. It was I knew what was going on because my brother was already active. People in the community was active. His homies was active, and I was like, I gotta. And you know, I had to step up and help him. Mm. Do you feel like fast forward a little bit when you get your first sentence right before you get out in I think two thousand and one? Before you get out, when you get sentenced, you get pulled over for the cops, and like you gotta serve time, time. Does it ever cross your mind, like, man, if it wasn't for my brother, I wouldn't have been there? No, I never look at it. I never look at it like that. You know, I never look at it like that. You know, you can always say no. Mm. And uh, I was well aware of what I was doing. I think I was excited about wrong, though. Mm. The excitement of wrong is something special. It was something special to me. You know, so I just think that's what it was. So, it, I, what? Where do you think that came from, though? Because I feel like in that situation, that was the, that's the easiest thing to do is blame everybody else. Except for no, you know you. what, Jay? I always knew. I always knew. it seemed like very young age. I knew right from wrong. You know, and, and we not we not stupid. We know what's right from wrong. You know, you learned it in the house. Mm. This is bad. This is good. Do this. Don't do that. And uh, but I was always excited because in my community, like I always tell people, the only people that they respected was the successful criminal. Mm. The people that got money. They were the only people that got respected. They was the kings of our neighborhood. It wasn't no the working dude, the working class. No, they worried about. Them, so I always was on, I got to figure out. I got to get some money. Mm. So when you get locked up, what's the first thing that's going through your mind at that time? The first time or? The first time. Well, not the, because I know you did some juvenile stuff. Yeah. The first time that you penitentiary. Yeah. I was scared, Jay. You see what I'm saying? I always tell people, like, I was scared because, you know, like a lot of people don't think about it, but I did. I was like, man, I hope nobody trying to rape me in this joint. I thought my ass was on line. I'm just being straight up because that's what I thought. I don't care what nobody else say they didn't think. I'm telling you, but I was like, oh shit. You know, you think about stuff like that. I wasn't beefing with nobody and none of that. So I ain't think nobody, but I'm thinking about like, yo, it's predators in this joint. So I don't know. I'm like really like shook about that shit. So, you know, with the help of grace of God, I came out, you know, all right, I ain't get, you know, my innocence ain't get detached from me. So, you know, but um, I just was scared, man. Yeah, you know, I want to rewind a little. I'm curious to like, you say you know right from wrong. And of course, you knew that going the gun route wasn't really the route to go. That no, it wasn't. You know, my 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 um when I was young, my uh, yo big homie, 
No, my, uh, my, my stepdad, Hip, Hip would always tell me it's a brain robbery, not a train robbery. The finesse game is the best game. Mm-hmm. Them hammers change everything. Once a hammer come in play, everything change in the crime game. And it's like, and I knew I was, I, ain't, I, ain't, I really wasn't built like that to shoot nobody, none of that. But sometimes, you know, the, the hammer speed up the process when you got the hammer, the gun on you doing robberies or whatever. And that's what I was going to ask. Was it strictly the, because you seen that it was a lot of money, you could get a lot of money quick. You ain't had to work too when you pull a, When you pull a slam out on somebody, a blower, one of them life changes out, everything change immediately. Speed up the process of whatever you're trying to do. Um, so that was strictly a money decision. Like I'm gonna just yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah. I wasn't trying to shoot quick. nobody. I wasn't built like that. Yeah, yeah. I shoot somebody, I'm probably not here now. Right. Kill somebody, you can shoot somebody in the leg, they could mm-hmm. die. So I'm like, damn, you know, I'm happy I wasn't built like that. Or I, you know, didn't convince myself that I was, you know. So I was like, you know, just trying to get a couple of dollars. I asked that, bro, because for me, like I came up in the I came up in Baltimore in the trenches, it's right? Like in a Baltimore, project, bro. Yes. 1121 Tiffany Court, the red door still there, right? And like similar environments, but I always knew that like I did not want to take this route because I see where it get everybody else. You were smart, but I'm but I'm looking at you now, and I feel like you smart. Yeah, but 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 sometimes we can be smart. You seen it in your community before, but we not strong enough to fight off the temptations of the street street game and the street culture and the street mentality. Mm. So you didn't see other dudes that you know that were smart. You knew, and they still fell victim to that. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying you smart on another level because you were strong enough to fight that shit off, to fight the urge. Because I know it probably was days when you was like, Jay, damn, I can make some moves, get a couple of dollars quicker. Easy. Uh, I ain't trying to go to work, to work in this job. But you were smart and strong enough to say, you know what? Nah. Cool. You cool. Mm. I also feel like it was the people around me, like the dudes that sold drugs at that, those moments, they was the ones like really keeping us off the street. Like, don't. Don't solid. Stop. You had solid dudes then. Yeah. What you think changed from that time? Because like, I feel like you had people that were saying, don't do it. But they was outnumbered by the people that was doing it. You see what I'm saying? It's like your mom, your grandma, everybody like, don't do it. You might have an old way to two, don't do it. But it's like, y'all outnumbered because every time I would leave the house, they out here getting busy. And the people that's getting the attention, the, the money, they, they on that side of the game. Mm. You telling me to go get a job or try to figure it out. I'm not. They figuring it out. Mm-hmm. You no, know, so I think that's what that was the case with me. Yeah, you know I, what I think the most one of the most interesting parts of it is the insta, institutionalization institutionalization of jail inside, but also with it, the impact that it has on us outside, right? Because I'm listening to you tell a story, and a lot of things you were saying, I'm like, bro, I grew up on these morals and principles, mm-hmm. and this we shouldn't be we shouldn't have to feel like this. For example, and this might sound crazy to all my niggas that's still in the project in the hood. Snitching, right? Like, my, not snitching, but minding your fucking business. Minding your business. In jail, like you mentioned, like, bro, you can get killed for not minding you. Even if you, yeah. like, your first experience, like, you got slammed up, right? Yeah. You got tussled up. Yeah. Just by saying, yo, I heard such and such and such. Or they got this for, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It wasn't even like you were snitching on somebody. Yeah. You were just talking about something, an observation. That transfers to the streets, or, or now I don't want to say the streets, but to urban communities where we grew up in. As like law. You get what I'm trying to say? And I feel like a lot of those rules that came up in the jail because that's where our people was raised at. That's where our fathers was raised at. And it transferred to the streets and it made us live lives that we shouldn't be living early. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's real. It's like, I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, especially when I came home from jail and I was with my nephew, my niece, and still be with my little nephews, little Reggie and all of them, and, you know, uh, Gil grandkids. I think I get excited when I'm with them to play with them and have fun with them because a lot of us, like me, I didn't have a childhood. I couldn't laugh. I couldn't play. I couldn't go. I had to go figure it out. And, I, and that happens a lot of times based off of hardships in the ghetto. It's like you don't even have a childhood. You out here trying to figure out hustle and be a man and, you know, especially if you get told you're the man in the house and you just trying to, you done. That's a fact. Because now you got real life issues where it's though you're trying to figure out how to get money instead of how to be a kid. Mm. How to play, how to laugh, um, you know, how to come in the house to a hot plate, and a lot of a lot of people don't have that, so they they they, they lose their childhoods. Yo, how do you now, right, navigate? And we're gonna go in another story if you allow me to. But how do you navigate that thought process? Because you spent so much time behind bars in prison, right? So like that's where you probably spent more time in I jail. I spent more time in jail than on the free world of my life. Exactly. So. That's all you know for, for at one point in time, that was all you knew. 
How do you escape that train of thought when it's out here when you feel like somebody might be trying to play you, right? Things ain't genuine. See, I ain't no egomaniac. So I'll be like, I'm the type of dude, I'll be like, damn, I caught that. Let me get away from this. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't the boy that I caught it. I'm a check you. I'm the boy. I, I peep. I peep all that shit because I've been around I'm talking about slicksters my whole life. So I'm like, I was one. So I'm like, ah, I peep. You try to pull a move on me. Let me get away. Hey, I'm going to get with you, man. I ain't tripping off of nothing. I ain't got no, I'm not doing no ego tripping. I'm not going to take it like, you know, damn, you try to play me. You think I'm a nut. You know, that's the mentality of us here. Everything is an immediate aggression. And the switch got more on a lot of us because we'd be like, what, you think I'm a sucker? I'm like, oh, damn, let me get away from him. <laughs> I mean, this ain't good for me. Let me dip. You know what I mean? That's be me. You think you got that from being inside, though? Yeah. Because you had to move like you that. Gotta risk, you got to have risk management, man. You got to know the risk is like, if I go back and forth, it could turn into something more than what it was. It, it is. Uh, if you out here, you got something going on. People will hype up a situation that's not a situation just because you Jay Hill, you got and you doing something with your life. Damn, Jay, you, you jump and you like all you had to do is just peep and be like, you know what? All right, bro, I'm gonna get with you, man. Let me go ahead, get away from you. You ain't got to check. Damn, man, you did this. What? Now a person sometimes people be looking for moments to just disrespect you or looking for moments to be ignorant or looking for moments to have a fallout, to play the victim. People are always looking to play the victim. Man, Jay on some Hollywood shit, man. Cool, I'm off him, man. Mm. You're like, damn, I just, I seen you do something foul. I checked you about it. Now I'm on some Hollywood. So it's just, you know, the multi-cases, they don't be necessary. But you couldn't be always be like that. What was the light switch? Like, what, when did you learn? I never was no, I, see, I never was no brute. So a lot of stuff, I always looked at it like, I ain't going, I ain't going to trip. And sometimes I knew that certain things was for me or certain people was for me. I never was the dude to trip out anyway. So, you know what I mean? I always thought like, I always seen that this is one thing I always seen. One of my favorite, it's like two people that's like my favorite cartoon characters. Uh, the Joker and Popeye. Popeye always be Brutus. Brutus never won. He never won. The Brutes never win. All that tough shit. I, was, I ain't never seen nobody win with the tough shit. So I was like, I, I like Popeye. I'd rather be Popeye. So what's your thing? So it's funny because I'm listening to you and like, that was always my thing, like the the the, the feeling like I got to prove myself. Not prove myself, but you ain't going to play with me, right? I never really been like a follower per se, but it sounded like, was that your problem, you think? Like that was the thing that held you back the most? I was a master of followers. I think most of us in the street coaches are followers because we ain't doing nothing that, that haven't been done already. Like we following something that we see wherever you sit on the steps or you're watching it. We following some, something that we seen somebody do that's in close proximity to us and say, damn, I want to be that or I want to do this or I want to get that. And we following them, Jay. We ain't, it ain't like we just thought of this. Thanks. Oh yeah, I just thought of this. Even podcasting, yeah, thanks. yeah. I just thought of this. I didn't think of that. So it's like, uh, we all followers in different departments of life, especially in the streets though. Mm. But So what would you think was your, your, your downfall though? Like what? Like what was your downfall? Not just robbing people, but a lot what, of times if you I look lack, inside yourself. Like I, lack, I lack patience. Um, I believe sometimes you know you wasn't sure of yourself, so you so you so you so you uh, seek the approval from outside sources, which is the community, women, people. So I think I had a lot of different issues going on, but uh, I'm just thankful that I was able to embrace the reality in them and say okay, and check myself with them and be able to identify what was going on inside of me to say, this shit is not going to be beneficial to my journey through in life. I got to remove some of these ways, some of these outlooks, uh, the, the environmental placements. I got to remove a lot of this shit. And, once I, and, and then I got to have more environmental awareness. When I say environmental awareness, you got to be aware of your environment and what's going on. And what environments, what environments do you feel good in? What environments do you don't feel safe in? What environments that is like, it, it, it just feel like it's a battle. You, so you, so everything you got to be environment. You got to be environmentally aware of where you stepping, your, where you taking your energy, where you taking your life at. Because you will be like, damn, hold up. Why well, anytime I get around in my office, I feel uneasy. You ain't supposed to be there. Mm. Where do you go where you just like, damn, it's peace here. I feel good here. I feel encouraged here. I, I can make it happen here. And I think a lot of people don't do that. And 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 you know the funny thing, they ignore the signs because your body tell you. Your body, your body, your body will tell you what's going on. Your mind will tell you what's going on. You'll be like, every time I get around this motherfucker, it just feels like it's just bad energy, man. Always angry or always trying to, you know, downplay what I'm trying to do or always just got some bad shit to say about somebody. Why are you there? 
Bro, you just turned this way up. Hold up. Mm, mm, mm. Let's talk about the, you said, basically the indifferent moments when you don't, when it's like, it's back and forth, conflicting. Mm -hmm. How are you able to acknowledge when it's conflicting and you shouldn't do it versus when you should? Because that can also come from growth because we know growth is uncomfortable too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can run away from something that's conflicting because it's uncomfortable as well. How do you know which one is which? Lady me, a lot of my times be like, you know, one thing I got, I turned off. I ain't got no, I, I, I broke my, I broke my uh, chill button and I ain't got no fuck it, my fuck it button. I turned it on and broke it. So my thing is a little different. So once I, if I feel it, I live it. Especially because my whole thing is like, I'm not in the streets no more. I'm not around bullshit no more. So anything that I'm on, I'm on some go time shit because I'm trying to materialize these dreams. When I write my notes down, when I put my list together of the shit I'm doing the next five months, whatever, when I'm when I'm processing all this shit, like, damn, okay, I want to shoot this show. I want to go here. I got to meet these people. I got to go here just to, I want to sit down with them for two days. So let me set this meeting up for them. I just want to get some game from them. I got to go over here. Damn, I got to go on this one tour. I want to vibe out just for a day to myself. Let me, so let me get me a hotel, go to that spa in that city, go to my man's show, vibe, and just... So I'll be, I'll be laying all that out. So I'm not going to put myself nowhere that's going to be in danger to my success and my progress of life and in the quality of life that I'm living. So a lot of times it's like my go button always on. I got, I, I try to put myself in a place where I can always go and go in a good way to uplift, uplift, you know, everything I got going on, elevation. That's what it's about. So, you know. So what I mean is like, so for example, me, I'm coming up, right? I'm going to just be real. Sometimes I'll be in rooms where I know it's elevating my career, but it's like, man, I don't want to be here because my mind is still in the hood as far as removed as I am. My mind is still like, it's supposed to look like this. No, you know what's crazy? Like, it's supposed to, genuine is this. This is a real nigga. No, 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 see, see, see. You got you to gotta deprogram yourself, then reprogram yourself in order to win. See, all that shit you learned in the street, it's going to be some good things that you might learn to grind, um, networking, you know what I mean? Because sometimes you can learn networking by trying to get drugs and trying to do whatever you was doing. But it's a lot of things you're going to have to, you're going to, have to delete. It's like, it's like if, you go, if you go somewhere, if I be like, damn, man, uh, I'm going to give you the phone. You're going to, de you're going to try to, you know, what's, let me, Back. Days, I'm going to clean the phone out first. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of times you got to clean, clean, delete that shit. You got to delete um, that mindset and that mentality because you'll be in a room that really could change your life. But you want some, you want some ghetto who, hood cool shit, man. I don't fuck with nobody, man. I ain't no dick eater. I ain't. And that whole mentality, I had you, it had you prisoner in, in a world that you you're not even living in no more. Based off a mentality that you grew up in, an environment that produced you, you holding on to some shit that ain't never been beneficial to you. So you sitting back and you like, man, I ain't no dick eater. I ain't talking to them. I ain't, I ain't saying none of them. Like, and I know that changed for you probably because when I seen you at the Blue Van Draws joint, you was moving around, kicking it with people. I mean, you had a long conversation there, so it was like, so it's like, um, that's what's paralyzing a lot of people. You had dudes as artists and rappers, and I didn't, I didn't got on the phone, kicked it with some, and I'm like, damn, you need features, man. I don't be fucking with niggas, man. I ain't, you know, I ain't no dick eater. Okay, you ain't, you ain't got nothing coming. You ain't trying to collab. You ain't trying to get your team strong. You ain't trying to do nothing. You just think some people pulls it like you because you. No, this thing is about team. Teamwork make the dream work. And it's about being in the right rooms and environment because all you're looking for is one yes. One major yes could change. And a lot of times, what you think is thorough, what you think loyalty look like, what you think cool look like, it ain't none of that shit that we learned in the hood. Because it's going to be somebody you least expect that will come and change your fucking life. I, the people that came and changed me and Gil life, you know, uh, financially, I, you, you ain't going to see them walking down North Philly. Mm, ain't look nothing like White that. folks, you ain't going to see them walking down there. But they came and believed in our product, believed in our brand that we was building, and they said we want to we want to partner out with y'all, man. We you know, and it gave us a license deal and it changed our life forever. So my whole thing is like, I just think a lot of times in the hood, that hood keep us in the hood, even if we move out the hood, mm. we could be around the world, and it's still we be on some hood shit, and it'll paralyze us from growth. It's like you in a, it's like you and you put yourself in a wheelchair and you can walk. So now you, your movement is slow. Come on, you man. You know what I mean? Your resources are slow. So it's like, I just think it's that you just got to wait for that one yes and it'll change your fucking life. You know what I mean? That's all you need, that one yes. And the game is over. Mm, mm, mm. Yo, it's so crazy to hear you say that. But what about 
I feel like sometimes just success, you can be a prisoner of your success too, mm -hmm. not even just the hood. For example, you come out 2017, you probably don't whatever you gotta do for an opportunity, right? Then you get the opportunity, but let's fast forward. Now I can't, I, I'm not taking those same opportunities. I don't need that, right? But sometimes it be that, sometimes that grind that got you there will continue to keep you there. But we see ourselves as, as bigger than that now. You, do you find yourself like mentally fighting with those type of thoughts? No, no, I don't find myself mentally fighting with them because it might be an opportunity that I was dying to get in 2017, I'm talking about I'm talking about a real life moment change and opportunity that I was dying to get in 2017. That that relationship that I was dying to get in 2000, or that moment that I was dying to get in 2000, or that yes, that yes might pay my bills for three four months back then because of the money. And I was like, damn, I get this, I can get this. Now in 2024, financially, it wouldn't make sense for me. But relationship-wise, it will. You know what I'm saying? So it's people that I know that could call me right now, and, re and based off of relationship-wise, I'm going to move out. Because when I was there, they made sure that I remember the moments. But not just that. It ain't even about the paper, because I might don't even want no paper. It might be like, no, I got it. Let me do that for you. Because the person that might be right here, you got to always remember that. That person that's... Right here, you don't know who they connected to right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Because they might have something going on, they might not have the finances, but they got the network. Like a lot of people, like that's why things, a lot of these uh, situations out here in these business, it got to be mutually beneficial. Because somebody might, you might do something for somebody and, they, and it ain't about giving you nothing. It's about, it's about, damn, they might go make a phone call for me one day. That could be a life-changing phone call based off of, where they went to college, based off who they frat brothers, who they sorority sisters is. So you know you got to be mindful of that. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't look at it like that. I don't be looking down on situations because I'd be like, man, it's all type of people, man. I pull up, and make sure you see what I'm saying. Like, all right, think about this. I could go on mostly any platform I want to. Um, and I go on these platforms based off of friendships that I have with these different people. That's big in our culture and outside of our culture. But it was important to me to make sure I do your platform because I not only it ain't about me telling you um, I'm gonna do it, but it's also about encouraging you and showing other people that who you could get on here and the respect that I got for you. And other people say, "Damn, I seen Wild on that John man. That's a good John." And I understand that. Now, I don't, like, I look at it like this. Yeah, I'm hot. And I remember this, rest in peace to Clay. Uh, Lil Duvall, he was T.I. Manning's brother. Clay said, Clay said was something that's very important. When you hot, when you piping hot, you got to do something for the people that's warm or lukewarm or whatever. Because you don't never know when you might become lukewarm and they might be popping hot or, or you might become, you know what I mean, cold and they piping hot. And they could just pour some, they could heat you back up. So you never know. I don't never look at this thing because I, me personally, I don't plan on being in the podcast space for a long time. Me and Gil don't plan for that. Me, me and Gil think about the days where we just somewhere on the farm just talking talking shit to each other and just li, li, lounging. People don't understand how, how much of a consistency and how you can never take off when you're in the space that we're in. So we don't look at it like that. But you know what I mean? I don't, you know, and it ain't even about it ain't even about favors, but I don't know, you know what I mean, where you might be in 10 years, and I could be able to, you know, my niece and nephew might call me and be like, oh, kids, damn, you know him? Who, Jay? Yeah, I know Jay. And it might be as simple as a little cool moment. Let me call. Hey, you don't know him? Jay, talk. Simple as that. It ain't about you giving me nothing. It ain't about you even making me hot again if I was cold. It's just about the simple fact of, a lot of times in our culture, we don't know how to say, you know what? Let me take out some time and give it to some people that's coming up. Or let me take out some time and share some, uh, share some of this game, share some of this information, and share even share my presence. Because I remember when I was like you, Jay, I was running around with a phone and a tripod. And these dudes, they were sitting down with me. And I didn't have no big platform. I was 
I was trying to create a platform. And the first one that sat down with me when I first started Where's Wallow, if you go back, the first interview was Meek. Mm-hmm. And then a sister called me, um, and that 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 interview that Meek gave me is it gave me that um it gave me that it it, 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 it just put that stamp that on me. That no, not just that, it put the stamp on me that other people could see yeah. something now to say, damn, let me get him an interview yes. too. Yep. Yep. And that's the same thing. You already got a bunch of successful people in there, but I just want to add to the, I just want to add to your your whole uh discography, uh, you know what I mean, or your whole catalog to add more value to you. You know what I'm saying? But when I'm, but it's like when I look at that, when I look at them people that I pulled up, when I pulled up, I'm in New York. I called Charlotte, man. I'm like, yo, man, I'm in New York, man. I love to sit you down for where's Wallow. Where you at, Wallow? I'm going to get this suit. Taylor, pull up. I pulled up. We sat there. I put my tripod up. We sat there in this Taylor when he was getting the suit, and he gave me an interview. Shot the West Side Gun, Jada Kiss, um, uh, uh, G Herbo, Lil Baby, Dirk. You see what I'm saying? If you go back and look at and I was doing it all off a phone. They ain't say you got a phone. I ain't going to do it. They say no, but you building. I respect it. And it wasn't, I don't even think it was about, oh, later on, Wallow, I might need you. It was just, it was what it was. And I respect it as that. So I got to remember that when people that's doing anything are on the come up, I make it my, make, make my, make it my, my thing to make time to, to throw some more flavor on them. You know what I mean? So that's how I look at it. I appreciate that so yes, much. Sir. Yo, I, um, I don't want to spend too much time on the, on the trenches and things. One thing, we were just talking about this off camera. I know you got to go soon. You be giving a lot of game. No pun intended, because of course, million dollars per game. But I haven't seen, and I don't think people know how much game you really be, the sauce you really be giving on this podcast, though. No, I be, uh, I, every time, you know, it, 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 it be airports, it be all type of place. Like, like that's what the whole point of me doing. And you know what I got to do? I never posted it, but I'm going to make sure I'm uh get my managing them. I got to make sure I post PodCon on my YouTube. Because PodCon was when I took a call to my friends, Angie. Uh, the owner of uh, Shade Room, I called Charlemagne, I called Brian Anderson, the head of podcast at YouTube. I called a bunch of people and I brought him there, my man Herb, he brought, talked about credit, and I put him in a room for 5,000 people for free. Mm. For free. It was free. PodCon. PodCon was to teach people how to start and monetize a podcast, but there's other people that came and they got information to do other things. And not just a podcast, a, a platform. Because Angie got a platform, the Shade Room is a platform. Oh, and, uh, the biggest. Because I'm big on that, like, I, and I ain't charge nobody nothing because I think I spent, I spent probably like 80000 for the venue and the stuff, anything you travel, you know. But uh, I just think that um, it's important that we school people because, like, a lot of people doing podcasts, but they always be like, how do I get the money? And, like, a lot of times I always tell them the money is right there. The money is the local business. Uh, the money is your first spon- – the, the, the local business is your first sponsors. That's where you find sponsorships. It's all about how you present it to them, how you step to them, uh, how you lay it out. But they got money. If you allow me, right, let's go back. When you when you when you on Gil first started million dollars per game, y'all was in a small studio, right? What was the thought process behind how y'all was going to do the business? Because we we oh, see we did that from the rip. Like you got to stand. <laughs> At that time, this was me and my ex fiance was together, April, out of Baltimore, Diva Glam. And I came right on there and I made an example commercial from the rip. As soon as we started, yeah, this episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Diva Glam. Have you had any good hair lately? If you're trying to, and I was promoting her company just for free, just off an example of what uh, an ad would look like. I had to show people what a commercial on Million Dollars Worth of Game would look like. Now, I already came up in a space where though I used to do commercials for people myself. When I first came home, I would go to like, I think I probably did like 30 different businesses and I did them for free. I go to John, I'm like, yo, man, Jay, uh, can I do a commercial for you? He'd be like, huh? Like, yeah, let me just do a commercial. And I wanted to show people to prove a concept of what a commercial would look like on my page before I start charging. And I do it. I'd be like, yeah, man, I'm right down here. I'm in Jay Hill Barbecue Shack, man. He got the best barbecue in Philly, whatever it may be. I'd be like, Jay, tell him what you got going on. I do that mini video. And it started to get traction. Well, other people call me, like, can I get a video? How much you charge? I'd be like, nothing at first. And then I start building it up into like, you know, Turned into basically like an a, a ad agency and stuff, a marketing agency. And um, so by the time I got to, uh, we started Million Dollars River Game, I already knew how to go. I already knew what to do. I want to stay with the podcast business because I, I want to, this is my shit right here. But I want to pause that and say, that's the one thing that was interesting about your story. Usually when you hear people go to jail, 
they study like law and stuff so they can see how they can get out. You was like, I'm gonna study marketing, marketing was so I can good. market myself to these parole mm-hmm. hearing people. No, not even the parole hearing people like all the way. It's about marketing, period. Like, like you got to market who you are to be able to get relationships, to get in certain places as a person. And then after that, I said to myself, after, you, you got to think about this. In, in this life, after God, everything is marketing. Who you vote for, where you buy your food, what you fly, how you fly, what you drive, what you wear, what gym you go to. Everything, what you watch. Everything on this planet is about marketing. Everything. I said, okay, that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing on this planet. So I said, oh, oh, that, that's where it's at. That's where everything, everything stop. Everything got to go through marketing. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when some of these advertising, like advertising ain't never going to go out of business. Never. <laughs> never. So all right, come back, back, back to this. All right. So I'm going to say something to you that. Young dudes, we always think this, right? And I'm curious because I'm sitting next to the person who, who, who who's, who's living it. Man, them niggas already had a name. Gil was a rapper, right? We see we see people talk about us more about Joe Button than anybody else. Like, like this nigga was a rapper, bro. He was always lit. You know what I'm saying? You came home to Gilly. Gilly was that nigga. Yeah. So like, some people would say, man, it was easy to start the podcast and get popping. Mm-hmm. What was your experience? Um, think about this. Think about somebody that played that play basketball. I don't think it's going to be easy for him just to play soccer. You got to actually be good in it. You got to actually, you know, be put the work in. I think a lot of times people don't look at the work. They don't look at all the episodes. They don't look at all the time. They don't look at the beginning. They don't look at the work of me and Gil outside of the episodes getting up every day. Getting up every day going hard still to now. Mm. Look at the body of work. It's all there. We don't take nothing down. So I think it's about like I understand that that could be somebody frustration, but we come from a, a we come from a community sometimes of excuse makers. Everybody is always looking for excuses. Why not to move out? Why not to max out? Why not to say I'm doing this and I'm doing this for the next twelve months until pop? Mm-hmm. Or I'm doing this for the next eighteen months until pop. We always looking for excuses. Why not? To, and sometimes them people that, that want to make the excuse. They not meant they they not meant to be on the floor. They not meant to be on the field. They meant to be in the stands watching the game. They meant to be a lot of people is meant to watch the winners. And people don't want to, and, and, and I think that's the issue that we got in our community where people don't want to embrace that truth. No, you're not, you, no, you're just meant to watch the winner. Grab your popcorn and watch me work. Watch this movie. You're not meant to be the star. Them the people that's gonna make the excuses, them the people that's gonna complain it. They just meant to be hecklers in the stand or watching the movie or cheering for or cheering for the stars, but they not meant to be in the movie. Yo, since you're so transparent with the numbers, I, I want to know. I'm a podcaster. I love this business shit, bro. How was y'all able to figure out which numbers y'all should like charge at? Because I worked with some people that tried to work with y'all that couldn't afford with y'all. Mm-hmm. How was y'all able to measure the numbers versus the views? And, like, give me the game of the numbers and the metrics at and money at the early point before we even get uh, to Barstool. Early, we knew our value. Where was y'all able to get it from? Uh cultural impact. You can't put a price on that. You, you can't really put a price on that, so you come up with your own number. So how do you measure cultural impact? Because that's something that people overlook. Like, like a lot of people, like, like a lot of people, uh, it, 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 you put numbers in your mind, and sometimes it's like what you feel as though you're worth, and sometimes you come to a middle ground. This is what you say you're worth. This is what our budget is. Let's battle. And then sometimes it's a back and forth. Y'all playing ping pong. Bing! Bing, or tennis, boom, and then y'all come to an even ground. So you're telling me you went out to multiple car dealerships, multiple businesses, and like, yo, I want you to advertise on my podcast for X, Y, and Z. Yeah. How many do you think you, what was the percentage of people you went out to to get the people that actually paid? Everybody but bit that we went out to. I had I had a trucking company. I had, I had Boy's Funeral Home. I had Springfield Hyundai. I had a lot of stuff. I had a lot of different joints, man. Springfield Hyundai got to the point where it's though. They told me, watch, let me see if let me see if I call this one. Come on, man. Get the game. Let me see if man, I call. This is, this is let me see game. if I call the one place. And a lot of people don't understand that. Right here. Put on speakerphone. Hello. 
Asia, how you doing? Hey, Wow, well, how are you? I'm on this. I'm on this podcast, right? And I was, uh-huh. and I always talk about you when I'm on podcasts because I talk about, I talk about, uh, you know, you put a, I talk about it ain't on. I don't think I talk about how y'all was one of the first people that I had as as a sponsor on Million Dollars Worth of Game back in the day, right? Uh huh. Uh-huh. And and I'm gonna talk about this. No, I'm gonna talk about the story of how. You remember the time you called me and said, stop advertisement? And why did you tell me to stop advertising? Because I was getting too many bodies? Yeah. So you got to think about it. She told me to stop advertising because our advertisement was so good that so many people was taking the bodies to a funeral home to do funerals with her. This early in the game. And we only I only did like three posts on a, in, in, on me and I was worth a game. Right. You know what I'm saying? And she gave me some nice, she gave me some nice paper. You see what I'm saying? Right. So it was like, but I'm going to call you another time. I just wanted to explain to this young fella how it was at the beginning. Right, because somebody else had called me and asked me, is that typical to do that type of promo? Because I think they, they wanted to reach out to you. And I was like, to be honest, I just seen him. I, but I was following you before you became who you are now. And I seen you at a Reezy funeral. And I was like, it's my time. God just led me to you. Mm-hmm. And I just said, I got to ask him. And you know what I mean? Because I just and believed it, in you. And it you happened. Know? Honestly, it didn't happen. No contract, no nothing. I'm like, I'll get it to you. I'll figure out how to get it to you. And that's just what it was. And, did, and, did, and you made your back, you made your money back triple. Oh, 10 listen, times. And now, what? I probably do 40 cases a month. You know? See? And how much was you doing when you first got with us? I don't know. Probably maybe five, maybe somewhere between five and ten. Thank you. All right. Well, listen, you have a good day, man. Let me finish this show. Okay. All right. All right, Asian. So I feel again that I think that's something that the businesses want. Now when I'm hearing cultural impact, that's not direct impact. Oh no, they ain't got nothing to do with her. They ain't got nothing to do with her. But I'm just telling you how the ads come. But what I'm saying is this: that's when you got the impact of the culture fuck with you. See, you gotta understand this. You can't teach what you don't know, and you can't lead where you don't go. We are the culture. We with the culture. We deal with the culture. A lot of people that's from our culture, they try to tell these white folks or they try to go out there and act like they with us and they don't fuck with us. They don't fuck with the people. We, 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 we deal with the people. We got the people behind us. And you can't measure that. And that's, and that's what makes us a little different. Yo, so when y'all get signed to me, I mean to Barstool, right? You says a licensing deal. What exactly is that? For the people that don't know. A licensing deal is when you're licensing... Like you would take this and you will license it to somebody and they could use it for a certain amount of time, but they, they, you're licensed, you own 100% of this, but you're licensing it to them so they can get advertisement dollars and y'all could bust the money down together based off of their relationships. Mm. So I peep, and I don't know if I'm wrong or right, I peep y'all doing a lot of other content for Barstool now. Mm-hmm. We got Gilly on Sports, we got Adventures, we got, um, you even got some shit. Uh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Wow. Are y'all doing so much content for Barstool to try to get that? No, no. We just come up with new shit. So that has nothing to do with the licensing deal for... No, no, it ain't got nothing to do with... It's like, it's like we could just come up with stuff just because we want more paper. You know what I'm saying? It's not contractually that we got to do anything outside of million dollars worth of game. Oh, shit. We just love to build more, more IP. We're building more intellectual property. And like, I got like... I got shows in my phone that you never seen that's already shot. I'm talking about whole new shows. Okay. Gil got whole new show. Like it's like we just building the company like because we just love the we just we just know how to do it. We got our own equipment, we got our own team. It's just easy for us. See, I was pocket watch watching the wrong way. I'm thinking like, you know how artists have like a a, a album, they gotta have a put out a certain amount of Oh no, no, we ain't gotta do nothing. The only thing we gotta do is a, a license deal, 52 shows, 52 shows a year, a million dollars worth of game. That's it. Everything else is added. So that's just more money coming to us from different sales, sales, you know, avenues. Yo, so, okay, about me and I was for a game. You've been, y'all been doing this for a little while now. How are you feeling now about it? Like, because it's, it's like, you know how people in the comments, like, niggas is like, man, get me. I mean, Wallow is over this shit, man. How do you no, feel about it? That's never the case. That's the baby. We doing it. It can be the case. We, we giving you top flight shit, uh, great interviews with people that never interview. Like, we got to, we got to, uh, a spot where it's though, like me, I ain't no comment warrior. I don't pay attention to that. You got people that just comment just because, like what you doing, and like it don't really matter to me. My thing is about 
just bringing people to stuff. If you if you pay attention, just like the Fifty Cent interview, it was a million dollars worth of game all through that month. Mm-hmm. That's so crazy. Mm. I think as you get with a person like me, by me getting so seasoned and seasoned, turned into more of a veteran in this game, I know how to approach this shit even better with the, in the interview style. And I'm looking for certain things as I'm as I'm as I'm pulling to get information that the fan can use, that the that the viewer can use. I work for the viewers now. So by me working for the viewers, it's not about my personal, what I want to know is about, damn, when I sit there in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down and I got to get a bunch of stuff that these people could learn from that they want to know if they was here. And that's what it's about. Yo, how are you, how have you seen yourself grow as an interviewer? Because I, like, even now, like when I watch it, I see you, like you're, you're intentional about the questions that you ask, mm-hmm. like how you, you do research. Whereas though in the beginning it wasn't as much. How have you seen yourself grow? I think I think it's, you know everything. Everybody could grow in time. You know what I'm saying? I just think I just I'm just well aware that it's people that I know I can help off of one question. They can change their whole their whole approach to whatever they're doing, especially on the business side, the artist side, whatever you got. You know, people. A lot of people in our culture they're trying to figure this shit out. Um, and I just think when I get some idea, I'm trying to just get information that people want to know. And that's what's important. Yeah, I feel like both times I seen you, it was like, yo, how much money you made? Like, how much? How much you I always ask you that. Yeah, I always right. ask you that because, and I'm asking you because I want to make sure that you are, uh, you're not devaluing yourself, or you're not just taking a couple of dollars, because a lot of times people will will just think, oh, that's cool. No, nah. everything got to make sense. The equipment you buy, it got to match what you got bringing coming in. Everything to travel, because because me, I'm be like, okay, I will hope that you made your money back off all your equipment from a bank. And a lot of times as a podcaster, I'm going to sit down there the way I am. I'm going to break the whole thing down and say, was it worth it? Sometimes when when you're at a certain level, you got to write down the travel costs. How much it costs to book the room that you're going to shoot it in? How much did you make off this? How much you going to make off this to not only get that back, Still pay for your equipment. Is you renting your equipment? Do you own your equipment? Um, is your equipment even necessary? Is you at that place where you need all this equipment? So I'm thinking about all that shit in the process to say, okay, this is what you should be making or this is what you should be doing or you know what? This is what you should do. I know you got all this. Sell us all equipment. Sell us equipment. Do that shit on the phone or do it on this one camera and just get the one main shot and sit there because... If your content is good, it ain't going to be about angles. It ain't going to be about a lot of shit. It's going to be about the content. Because like I told you, I shot multiple series of uh, seasons of Where's Wallow with an iPhone. The biggest artist in, in the world. Some of the biggest athletes. So my whole thing is like, I'm looking at, okay, let me write this down. How do this make sense? How do you make money off of this? Um, and, and sometimes the money is not physical money. The money is... And that's what people need to understand. The money is not physical money. You can make, you can 10X your whole visibility in anything. If somebody take this interview and you just seeing clips on 30 different platforms, that's money. Because you can always go and you can cash that in one day because that's cultural impact. So it's like people could take, damn, let me take this joint. Let me chop this up. You see that joint? Damn, he said this. He dropped it on. Damn, over there they said this. Oh, he got and that's where you start building your stuff up. Because you could take them views off of all them platforms and leverage them. Yeah, this type of stuff I get. You got it all on the deck. You're showing them. Like, it's deep. And that's what it's about. I never think about it like that. Yeah, it's not just about money. See, it's about, you know, because, like, you might go and you, you might say to yourself, damn, man, in the last year I spent 60, 70, 80,000, 100,000 doing this podcast thing. I never really made money. I probably made 10,000. But you probably made more money and impact than you would have did if you would have got physical money. You see what I'm saying? Because the 100, that 100,000, you probably spend in travel, lodging, equipment, uh, booking this room, booking that, and going here and team and all this shit. It might be in, 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 in cultural impact. That shit might be worth eight hundred thousand. But again, how do you measure that though? Like, you, you you measure it by 
you can see it. The matrix, you can see it everywhere. When it's anywhere, you, that's how you measure. Like you, you it's, it's just like, it's just like you can just see it. It's like it's a feeling. It's the energy. The people going to talk about it. It's like it's just that. But 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 I just think a lot of times, you know how you you know how you see sports. You be like, damn. Sometimes you know you you can measure it by numbers. You know how the players be like, damn, he got all that money. How the fuck he get all that money? Especially in the sports game, you be like, how the fuck he get all that money? Facts. Yeah, that's hundred percent. Yo, um, it was a point in, in jail before you got your GED. I think you were saying a part of you getting your GED was like, not just for you, but so you could feel more confident as well. Mm-hmm. Like almost like this, this sense of like feeling like worthy. Yeah. And I was curious, do you still sometimes feel that outside of prison when it comes to these businesses, these, these rooms that you're in, the pe- people you're around? No. When I go into these rooms... Um they looking at proof of concept. I got proof of concept. Mm-hmm. I ain't go to Harvard. I ain't go to Yale. Warren, you know, Warren School of Business is in uh, Philadelphia University of Pennsylvania, one of the greatest, biggest, you know, uh, business schools in the world. I ain't go there. I'm doing it in real time, though. I'm building stuff and marketing it in real time. So there's a big difference now. So I ain't even got to talk. We ain't got to, we ain't talking about no education. We talking about proof. Do you think other people try to treat you differently because you ain't go to these institutions? You nah, ain't come up. Nah, I never had them issues. I, they want results. They want to be able to, you know, partner up and collaborate with people that know how to move and shake and know what they're doing. They don't be caring about that shit. You know, it's just all about it's all about your belief, your confidence, and uh, your results, man. Because you can't deny a proof of concept. You can't deny that shit. It's real. You can feel it. You can see it. You can smell it. It's just a big difference. Yo, I seen you at Blue um, Party wrapping up soon. And I asked you, I said, yo, do you feel like Wallow 267? And he was like, man, this ain't nothing. I already knew I was going to be here, basically. And I'm like, nah, you, it got to be some feeling of like. No, I already knew. When I say that, I already knew that I was going to do something right with my life. So I don't be looking at I ain't tripping off of like, I ain't trying to. I'm not trying to get in a position to flex on you, flex on him, flex on us. I don't care about that. So I'm, I'm just like, all right, okay, doing my thing. All right, so what? I, I mean, the, you know, the air I breathe ain't no different from yours. It ain't better than yours. What, I ain't better than you, you ain't better than me. So it's like, what I'm supposed to be hype about. So what I'm asking is sometimes just like, cause that's gratitude, right? But what about like just that moment of acknowledging who you are and how far you've come, bro? Cause bro, you, my nigga, you got out in 2017 mm-hmm. and you probably one of the biggest names around the world right now, bro. That's not normal. I don't even look at it like that. I guess that's probably why I'm, I'm just, I'm cool about it. I don't be tripping off it like that. I just be like, damn, I got to get up and go hard today. <laughs> you know what I mean, so where's the gratitude? Where does the gratitude play it? Because if we look at it like that all the time, I'm thinking about God now, right? Yeah. Fuck the Instagram, fuck the numbers, yeah. money, all that, right? I'm thinking about God and, and life, right? How do you really appreciate what you have? If you oh no, always... no. One thing about me, I'm thankful to God. You see what I'm saying? Because God gonna touch you, then He gonna bless you. And uh, that's that. But it still be like, I guess I don't be like hype off of. How people may see me, cause I don't, I don't be seeing me like that. I just be seeing me like, damn, I'm family, I'm wild, I'm your cousin. You see what I'm saying? From around the way, that's how I look at it. You see what I'm saying? I'm on, so it'd be like, I don't be tripping. So how do you measure the next, like, I guess the next accomplishment for you? Like for me, right? So, I mean, I'm very confident, but at the end of the day, I know that I've been working for this, right? And it's like, this is like a goal of mine. I'm like, bro. I can look at myself and say I'm proud of it. I can look at myself like, y'all, I really came a long way, bro. Mm-hmm. How do you measure that for yourself? Uh, I don't know, man. I think when I be listening to music, a lot of times I, I get emotional and it catch me that I did so much. Yes, that's what I'm trying I'll to tell like, you. Know, it'd be like, damn. I'll be looking. I'll be like, damn, man, you know. Sometimes, especially when I'm by myself, I'm listening to my music, I'm laying back, and I'll be like, yo, this shit is wow. That's what I'm talking about right there. You know what I mean? I'll be like, and it'd be like, it'd just be like a dream sometimes, you know? Mm. There's a time where I remember, like, I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, even thinking about it, like, sometimes I cry, like, just, like, 
this, bro, where we come from, bro. You don't do this. You can't do this. You can't even. You don't even lead in. You don't even lead the neighborhood. Let alone jump on a plane. Let alone say I'm a move to make my life better for me. Um, you don't do that. You see what I'm saying? Like you don't. That's impossible. Where we come from, you know what I mean. So it's, it's always a blessing to be able to have an opportunity and for people to be able to see you that come from the environment that you come from, and it can encourage them. Like, oh damn, Jay did that. I could do that. You know what I'm saying? Jay made that. Uh, he moved to where? Oh man, Wallow went where in the plane, bro, man. I was running around this joint catching seventeen dollars mega bus. I'm talking about man. I was so good. I get me a flight in a in a hotel, motel, wherever to. LA funded two hundred dollars. I was a misjit. I was a master of that stuff, finding that stuff. And I go out there in twenty four hours, be back, um, shoot the, shoot my content, do interviews with people. I remember one day I went to um, LA. It was like twenty four hour run. I went there. I had content. Me and Game. I was in the studio with Game. I interviewed G Perigo. I interviewed OT. Um, OT Genesis and Dane called me over to his studio to introduce me to Ye. And that was like in 24 hours. I stayed in like a hotel near the airport. I think I got bit that night, bed bugs. But it didn't matter. I was always getting bed bugs by on the first journey when I was coming home. Because I was, I'm staying at any joint. I mean, I'm staying at any hotel I could stay at. You know what I mean? So uh it was about making it happen. I think. Them moments really, really helped me because I was like, I was just so happy because I'm moving around for the first time in my life. I never, I never left. I never used to leave Philly, jump on the planes and none of that. So for me to jump on a plane, shh, it don't take no money. Oh, I'm jumping on Amtrak, shooting down, I'm doing like, man, it was just crazy. I'm driving my Prius. I'm driving, I'm tearing the East Coast up, going here, my minivan. I just think, man, uh, I hope people seen that and say, damn, I'm going to go at the mines too. Yo, million dollars worth of game, bro. Podcom free. You running up on the camera's motivation. You everything you're doing, it seems like it's to motivate the niggas that come from where we come from, not to make the same decisions that you made. That ends is people in general that's in that dark place. You know, man, people, man, people be beating themselves up. And I always talk about how people they bigger hater. You your biggest hater. And it's like, people just give up, man. They think because they was homeless, they think because they was on drugs, it's over. And I'm like, yo, man. Even with my book, it's like, that's what Home With Good Attention is about. I want you to get out of that, that you like, it ain't never over, Jay. It's never over. But that motivation, what you're doing for the people, why, bro? What's your why? Like, why is that so important to you? You know, when I was in jail, I think people only think about help when they need it. They never think about help when they could give it. And I and I used to think about, damn, I, I need, you know, it was days I needed to push. I couldn't get it. I got it through music in jail or reading or looking at Anthony Bourdain, but it was like, uh, I know how we always want help, but nobody want to help us. And nobody want to give help. So I said, I'm going to get the help that I want. I need that push. So I said, I'm going to be that push for other people. I'm just a pusher. A pusher and a reminder. Like, yo, come on, man. You can, Come on, keep moving. You got this. Um, because a lot of times, I know a lot of people is around a lot of pullers. Why are you doing that? You tripping. You doing too much. Come on, you, you can't do that. You know? And that's another part of the institutionalization world. We, we done for real, bro. But even like I remember you said when you first went in for your your parole hearing, right? And you was granted it. And you was excited, but it was like almost where we talk about crabs in a barrel. We ain't seen crabs in a barrel for shit. Cause when I'm when I'm listening to that, when I'm reading that, I'm like, oh, ain't no bigger crabs in a barrel than this. You can't even express your excitement for being about to get out. Mm -hmm. Because Oh, niggas is in there trying to hold you down. Yeah, so once you can get through that, this out here is easy. And there's more people in jail in the free world than it is in prison. Everybody, they, they, they lock, they, they prisoners to their thoughts. They prisoners to the idea. They just prisoners to other people's opinion. We live in a time now where people fear a person's opinion on social media more than they fear God. Mm. God tell you not to do all this stuff in the Quran, the Bible. He tell you not to do all this stuff. You do it anyway. But... You you more you you ain't scared of God what he gonna do to you but you scared of somebody you you more scared of somebody's opinion oh no I can't do this because they gonna say this I can't do this because they gonna say this I can't do this because they gonna think this fuck them 
Come on, bro. All we're good intentions is out right now. I think it's number one on, uh, number one Amazon, on Amazon's top tw- 200. No, number one on Amazon Hip Hop. It was number one on Amazon's Motivation, no, uh, new releases. It was number one in a couple categories. Yeah, bro, so you a nigga it. from the hood, bro. Come yes, on, sir. dog. We doing Come it. on, man. You wrote your, this your first book. Yeah. How would it feel, bro? It, it feel good. And uh, it's just like, you know, it's a, it's, it's a great thing. I'm just, I'm just showing people that, like, you could do it, too. That's all it's about, like, you know what I mean? And I, and I came from behind the eight ball, 20 years behind the eight ball. Come back out here and just figuring it out, you know? And that's what it's about. Mm-mm-mm. I appreciate you so much, man. For you, Jay, for coming, you know, making the time to figure it out. I told you, my word is my rep. I told you, I said, when the book, you know what I mean? Yeah. You hit me like, yo, tomorrow, I'm like, oh, fuck and it. I was like, no, out. because I knew, <laughs> I, had, I knew I had the time, because I've been yeah. running around city to city doing this, what's the name? I said, damn, tomorrow. I mean, it work. I got to get the time so I can try to, you know, make this happen. And How many times you see niggas drop the ball on like that? Like, because they say success is when preparation meets opportunity. Like, not saying we wouldn't have did it again, but... I'm not saying people drop the ball, but I know, uh, I don't know the situation. You got kids, you might have to watch the kids. You don't know, but I just said, it wasn't like it wasn't going to happen. I yeah. probably had to catch you in Atlanta, but I'm like, this is a good time, and I ain't want to run, I ain't want to be uh, moving around doing press, and don't forget the, the press, our press. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a little different. Yeah. So that, that was important. I'm like, damn, it's right now, it's fresh weekend, it's going down. I got to make sure, you know what I mean? And I told you I was going to do it, so I just wanted to stand on my word. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. You know what I mean? So I just hope uh, if you watch this, you got some information for me. Uh, like, subscribe, share, J Hill Podcast, and uh, show the brother some support. If this ain't motivation to the niggas coming up, man, I don't know what it is, man. My nigga Rallo, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is rap. We out. That was great, bro.